Hey everybody, welcome back to Framework Films. I'm Mike Lindell and today I'm gonna to teach you how I speed ramp all my drone footage. So let's go ahead and dive right in. I'm here in Premiere Pro and I've already loaded in this uh, clip from Seattle onto my timeline. It's of the Seattle Space Needle and you'll kind of see I'm doing this like half kind of orbit around the needle as this one elevator kind of shoots up. And I thought this would be a really great clip to showcase an example of how exactly you speed ramp it. And, you know, sometimes a little bit of polish is needed. Sometimes if you just speed ramp it, it looks a little raw. So I will throw a little bit of directional blur over it just to make the clip feel a little more natural. I'm going to start by right clicking the FX button up here and I'm gonna go over to time remapping and speed. It's already selected and I wanna set a keyframe. And you can do this a couple ways. Um, I think the easiest way is finding that moment in that clip where you want that keyframe to initiate. I can come over here to time remapping and I can click this little stopwatch button. And that's gonna add a keyframe in position. And I'm gonna scroll over to where that elevator kind of stops uh, being visible, kind of tucks away underneath the saucer of the needle. And I'm going to add another keyframe there. And that's just so kind of I, I understand that frame of reference. If I'm thinking about how I want this clip to display, I'm gonna to wanna to go from slow to really fast as, it, as that elevator pushes up and then back to slow once it's kind of not there anymore. So now that I have this kind of keyframe in and keyframe out point, I'm gonna click and drag this line very, very tall. I want this to be very, very fast, right? Maybe I'll bring it up to, I don't know, 1500. Let's play it back and see how it came out. Boom. So you see how like it doesn't really ramp, but our speed effects have been applied. Now that our speed effect has been applied, we need to properly ramp it. There's no curve in that motion. It just goes slow, fast, slow, but we want it to be smooth, right? So all I have to do is click on these little points and drag these lines out. Just need to drag those playheads out a little bit. And all I'd have to do now is click and that little lever appears. So now all I have to do is kind of click and drag it and, and it curves that point, right? So that's how you effectively create that speed ramp. But I don't know, and you can kind of fudge around and, and adjust it as needed. Sometimes you need steeper ramps. Sometimes you need more shallow, less steep ramps. I, I try to keep my ramps like pretty quick, pretty punchy. And that's because I feel like when, when you slowly ramp to, to a fast motion clip, it can look a little amateur. Um, not all the time. There are definitely different times where certain effects are needed, but it's, it's all based on the scenario. I found usually with drone clips, if, if you keep them punchy, let's play back, it animates a little bit more. I actually want to speed that up a little bit. So I'll just continue to click and drag that up and we'll play back one more time. See, and, and that kind of gives that full range of motion speeding around the Seattle Space Needle, kind of zipping. Um, but I've, I've noticed that when it moves pretty fast, it's almost like a, a jarring feeling of being on a roller coaster. I've had a couple people ask me, like, how, how would I smooth out that orbit? How would I smooth out that ramp? And my answer is I actually use what's called directional blur on top of the speed ramp, keyframing at just those moments when that speed ramp starts until that speed ramp stops. Now the next step is to apply directional blur, but because I've already engaged the speed ramp, there are certain effects that don't work on speed ramped clips. Directional blur is one of them. Uh, what I normally do in this scenario is I'm actually gonna nest the clip and it's kind of like flattening all the layers so you can have a clean clip to work with with the effects that you previously applied. In this case, I've already color graded it and we've already put on that speed ramp. But I want to keep my position. I want to understand where I put those speed ramps into place. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it. And this is just so we can keep a frame of reference. This is just so we see where those ramps were. 
I'm gonna come over, I'm gonna right click it and click nest, and I'll name it, it, it kinda doesn't matter, you can name it whatever you want, whatever naming convention you need. I'll name it Seattle Nested Clip. You can name it anything. So we'll click through that, and you see now it's like, we play it through, and that speed ramp still is there, but we just no longer have a reference to where it is because that clip is now nested. But that's why we kept this reference frame. Let me just extend my timeline a little bit. What I'll actually do here is move my nested clip up and move our reference clip immediately below. And now we see exactly where that speed ramp comes into play because we have that reference clip. It's right here and it's right there. And now all we're gonna do is add directional blur right in between where our pinheads are in the speed ramp to kind of smooth it out. Um, so all we're gonna do now is head over to our effects and we're gonna type in directional blur. And I'm gonna drag and drop directional blur right on top of my nested clip. And right now we've obviously, we haven't engaged directional blur just yet, but I'm gonna come over to right where that speed ramp begins. Um, I'm on a window, so I'm gonna hold alt and use my scroll wheel to expand this clip just so we get a little more visibility. Um, to where that speed ramp starts and stops. You can also achieve a similar effect if you just grab this little handle here. You can drag in and drag out. So now that we've added directional blur right on top of this clip, all we're gonna do is find that area where that speed ramp starts. Right about here, right? And we're using the reference clip to understand where it starts. We're gonna start that keyframe in directional blur, we're gonna click on the keyframe button, we're gonna add it, and it's zero right at this moment, but we're actually going to increase it to accelerate to the top of the speed ramp, right where the blur length would stop increasing in gain. So right about here, maybe we'll hit five, right? And we do this because at the beginning of that blur, if you think about motion, it's still accelerating. So at the beginning of that acceleration, it's not gonna be as blurry as it is towards the end of the acceleration phase because it would be moving faster, right? So we've done the first kind of speed ramp of two, I guess the whole thing is a speed ramp, but this first curve, we play back and we see that blur happen and it blurs. Let me make this full screen and we can play it back. So you see like now that we've finished that first curve, we no longer need to leverage that deceleration blur, right? Because once it's finished decelerating, which in this case it has, that blur was still applied to the clip. So now we can use our reference clip and find just the top of that peak. And we can add a keyframe here from five. And we'll find just that ending phase keyframe, probably about there, and we'll return it to zero, right? So now if we look, based on our reference clip here, accelerate, decelerate, and it all coordinates with the blur that we set. So I'm gonna go back into full screen mode by hitting the tilde key and I'll hit play. And boom, we've just added it, right? So something that you wanna keep in mind is maybe five is a little too much, maybe it's not you're gonna have to kind of adjust your way through it, through speed ramping, through the appropriate speeds, through the appropriate blur length. Another fun thing that we can adjust is the direction of the blur. So in this case, we're moving left to right, not up and down, not diagonal, not forward and back. So there are different ways that you can change. I guess the, it's like a radial dial. There are different directions that you can change this directional blur. That's why it's called directional blur. <laughs> Uh, so I typically take a look at this if I'm using a blur length of 100, like that's clearly not what we're actually going to be using, but you can actually see like when you adjust the direction, you can click and drag it. You can see which direction, right? It's kind of like a clock. It kind of ticks around. You can see which direction makes sense to use given the general direction that your clip is moving. This clip moves left to right, so it doesn't make sense to go up and down with the blur. We maybe want to go a little bit diagonal, but for the most part, left and right, which is around 
90 degrees, maybe I'll do 95 degrees. That, to me, visually, it looks good. And we're not gonna keyframe the direction. We're only keyframing the blur length because the direction of this clip anyway stays pretty consistent moving from right to left or left to right is kind of the same motion. So we only need those four keyframes. That fifth one automatically generated when I started fun funking, you know, messing around with the direction uh, blur. But now when we play that back in, let me back it up and I'll go full screen. When we play that back, whoosh, right? Like we get that solid motion, we get that solid blur length, we get the solid direction and the whole thing really came together. That's pretty much it. You know, it, it's actually a very easy concept and very easy to implement. It just takes a little bit of foresight and, and it takes some planning on how you're trying to record your drone footage and, and what effects you want to apply to it in post-process. So whenever I'm doing a half orbit, I'm always thinking about, am I gonna speed this up? What would be a cool angle? What's my point A, what's my point B? And I speed ramp around it. And thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And until next time, we'll catch you soon.